there are, please rise to the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Seated. We should have presentation for this month. So I'll pull that up to read into the record. It's Women's History Month. So, whereas women of every race, class, and ethnic background have made historic contributions to the growth and strength of our town, state. It's, he took the full screen from me. I was looking at it on my personal. Oh, and no, it's okay. Right. And there you go. And whereas women have played and continue to play critical economic, cultural, and social roles in every sphere of life, every town, state, a significant portion of the labor force working inside and outside of the home. And whereas women have played a unique role throughout the history of the town, state, and nation by providing the majority of volunteer labor force. And whereas women were particularly important in the establishment of early charitable, philanthropic, and cultural institutions in the town, state, and nation. And whereas women of every race, class, and ethnic background served as early leaders in the forefront of every major progressive social change movement, and whereas women have served in our country courageously, and whereas women have been leaders not only in securing their own rights of suffrage and equal, equal opportunity, but also in the abolitionist movement, the emancipation movement, the industrial labor movement, civil rights movement, and other movements, especially the peace movement, which create a more fair and just society for all. And whereas Despite these contributions, the role of women in history has been consistently overlooked and undervalued in the literature, teaching, and study of American history. Now, therefore, I, Steve Jones, chair of the Collin Town Council on behalf and the community at large, am proud to honor and celebrate the contributions of women and do hereby proclaim March 20, 2022 as Women's History Month, dated at Tallinn, Connecticut, this 8th day of March 2022. So thank you, everyone. It's International Women's Day. And it is today. also International Women's Day. So that's a good point. It's a very fitting day to read this into the record. Um, public petitions and communications and public participation on any subject within the jurisdiction of the town council with a two-minute limit. If you're on Zoom, you can hit the raise hand function. Or if you're on a phone, star nine. Or if you're in the public, you can approach to the white table and state your name and address. All right. Seeing none, we will move on item six. There are no public hearing items. So item 7A, reports of boards and committees responsible to council. We have 7A.1, which is an update from the Commission on Peoples with Disabilities. I do see it looks like Susan Hughes is on and we also have Bev Bellity in person. So that being said, we'll uh, put the report up on the screen and Susan and Bev, if you have any comments about the report or want to summarize it, that would be great. Hi there. Hi, I'm sorry. Um, so I'm I'm totally unprepared to do this. I apologize. Um, in terms of making sure that anyone with a disability can, can reporting, do I need to read this? Should I read this for anyone that's visually impaired? Um, if you're comfortable reading it, but it can be, it can be a high level summary. Um, yeah, so this is an activity report that I, I prepared. So at least I'm familiar with it um, on that level. Uh, I, I was not prepared to give this report to you guys tonight. So I'm not sure what is expected or, or, or even um, typical, but uh, what I did is summarized our, act, our activities as a commission since we, we, since we were put into place uh, about a year and a half ago. And, um, you know, each of our meetings, we tried to accomplish some sort of um, some something. And, you know, our first meeting, we, we had uh, David O'Rourke from HBCC explain the services that they provide. We, um, we initiated a Facebook page that went live in February of last year, and, and we try to keep um, active with with uh, relevant information. Um, we lobbied for a proclamation that March is um, National Disability Awareness Month successfully last year. I think that that might also be in place. 
Um, we, we also did a statewide needs assessment survey. And the reason we did that was to go outside of our own experiences and um, look to the community to identify the most important issues that people were experiencing so that we could then sort of drive our um, initiatives and our, our goals and objectives towards those priorities. And you can see them there, transportation, employment, housing, nothing we didn't already really know, but uh, in order to make sure that we were responsive to what the community was really feeling, we needed to, um, we wanted to do that. So we also uh, did a, a, a presentation on government benefits, which was very well received. And um, we are committed to presenting more of those going forward. If you could scroll down, because I don't know it by heart. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, we initiated a resources page on our section of the town um, website that is a live um, area. It's a well, a, it's a, not a document, but it's it's continually being updated so that um, it's it is a because the, these things frequently, frequently change, um, but we're trying to provide a reference point for our community to get information on different aspects of, you know, the disability um, resources, the disability resources that are out there. Um, we, we spoke to the, chair of the EDC. We're trying to engage with the EDC um, on an ongoing basis to understand how we can better uh, engage local businesses and, um, and how, and this is very fluid, we're trying to understand how we can help people with disabilities and, and, and um, employers in Tallinn utilize people with disabilities and 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 everyone get you know getting into a win-win situation oh we intended to celebrate talent we distributed those surveys um, that i mentioned before and we had an accessibility workshop on the green with the town council and the and the historic district commission which is an ongoing issue so i think the third the the most important things on this little summary of activities are these last three and those go back to our, um, our main object or I think responsibilities to the town council. And that is to advise the town council on disability issues and how to kind of, how we see things um, that can be improved in town. So these three items are that uh, recommendation that accessibility should be on the special permit app as a requirement, recommendation to the town council that Tallinn should review the ADA plan and join the ADA coalition, which I think has already been um, done. And then our town green accessibility statement, which we submitted to the town council. Um, would, would you like me to read that in full or is it okay? We, we definitely okay. get back in December, and yeah, it is up on the screen for the public to see, as well as in our packet. Okay, okay. So anyone who can't see the screen, or well, that's that's an issue. So, um, so that's that's uh, all I'm really prepared to to present. Um, I don't know if if that that's what you guys were expecting, or and then any input would be appreciated. So we know going. Forward do things differently. Well, that was a good summary. I'll, I'll go around the room. I have one question I'll ask, but if there's any counselors that have questions to either Susan or Bab about the commission and maybe what you're looking forward to doing in 2022, that might be good. Councilman Ruccio, colleague Councilman Udicek. Hey, Susan, how are you? Good, thanks. And, um, question for you. On the recommendation, I haven't seen this one, that accessibility should be on the special permit application as a requirement. Are you talking about special permits that 
zoning or something specifically that comes to the town council? I think that, that that came from the events issue. So events that are being held on the green or um, you know at, at on town property in general, that it seemed like you know that I've always been the vocal one that you know we, people can't access the scarecrow contest or the or the Santa Claus thing on the green. So if it's I mean, it, it doesn't have, well, I mean, a requirement, it, it really is a requirement, right? If, if the town property is, it needs to be accessible. So if an event is being held on town property, somewhere on the permit application, it should probably mention that accessibility is an issue and should be required or should, you know, should be accessible. Okay, thank you. That clarifies it for me. I understand now. I wasn't okay. sure talking about planning and zoning. No, not, not Yeah. Okay. Oh, Councilman Utica. Um, hey, Susan. Um, I've been on the Disability Commission for three or four months, and I appreciate all the hard work uh, and dedication you've been putting into it. From the council, I know you have recommendations. Is there? We could you just support um, the commission in any which way besides the recommendations? Oh gosh, I mean, I mean, this just gets back to what I've been kind of singing, the song I've been singing for the last couple of years, and that is just try to get some money in the budget so that we can do some accessibility studies on the green. Um, you know, even though our rank accessibility uh, as the highest as the most important issue I think it is in Thailand I think you know our pr the problem with the green is is so obvious and um, and has been you know nobody's fault it's just nobody's brought it up until now and and really pushed it but it, it's it's an issue it's it, it it's got to be fixed at, at some level somehow we got to take the step to make it happening it's not going to happen overnight it's not going to happen even in you know a couple of years but you know I, I that's that that's what I think that you know our, our accessibility statement is all about and um, that's where we need support um, I'd also like to circle back and and say um, thank you guys for all of your support so Lisa and um, and everybody, you know, that's that's really gone beyond and made things happen. And 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 that I think is it's the intangible, right? It's it's what makes people notice that this is important for Tolland. And 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 so the, the conversations change and people start thinking, and that's that's mostly that's our, our biggest battle. To try and get people to start thinking in terms of inclusion, true, true inclusion, and and making sure everyone has the same opportunity as anybody else. So thank you for that. Um, is, I don't know, can I ask you questions or is it just basically on this? If I can ask, is is there any? Yeah, if you want to ask any questions to Susan or Bev, I think. Uh, is, uh, is or, there, or, go ahead. Hey, you know, we do seem to do a lot of engineering studies in this town. Is there any, some, or one maybe it's already been, it's in the works, but doing something around the green that could help what Susan's talking about? Yes, that's, that's already underway. What's going on? We have contracted with a, an engineering firm that specializes in historical districts, as well as ADA requirements within those districts to come up with a happy um, mesh with it all. Once he gets to a point where he's ready to move forward, they will be reaching out to the people, uh, not people with disabilities, as well as the Historic District Commission to get input from both sides regarding their concerns and, and ideas and things like that. Um, 
and he will be reaching out to them. I think it's getting. I have to talk to David. Yeah. All right. But um, so that that is in the works. I'm paying for that out of this year's budget. So that's why I didn't put it in next year's budget because I'm all set there. The other thing um, in our goals to be looking forward um, towards uh, the future is also the um, accessibility to the various parks and such and other areas around the town. That will have to be a um, process. We couldn't really link it in with the Miracle Field project. However, that Miracle Field project that we're looking to um, that they're looking to do does include a lot of um, the ADA um, needs for the community for, for that um, that field. So there, there's a lot of things coming down the pike in, in the future regarding that. And there's um, the the walkway in the uh, the walkway in the capital budget over at Cross Farms. That's scheduled to move forward in the next budget process as well. So we're making investments. The other thing we did was the uh, the uh, grass mat on the green to try to help give accessibility. And uh, I got a lot of positive comments from that. And certainly thank you to all the citizens who also contributed. We have one right here in the audience. Um, but you know, between a joint effort of making that happen and our public works department went over and beyond to, to go and get it and install it and hope that it'll be there for you know years to come to provide to meet those needs. Yeah, I definitely saw people using it. Mm -hmm. yeah. It wasn't just ADA, yeah. people with strollers, things yeah. like that as well. All right, thank you. That's all I have. I just had one question maybe for Susan needs assessment survey. And I was curious if there's a desire in some of the future to have either someone contracted out to do it like a phone to phone survey or sending out mail or, or doing a contact list we did it through um our former chairperson and he did to say okay we looked at perhaps doing it ourselves because it wasn't as successful as we envisioned so there is a point that yeah we we're thinking about redoing that okay you, right. you might proceed doing that for annual assessment just to see where things change yeah. and and I did want to say that with the parks and everything, we have talked with Bruce, the rec director, because some of the issues can be fixed. It's um, you know, with the public works department. So that's opened up a whole dialogue with, with Bruce. And we, we did uh, through one grant get the ADA doors in the front. So it, it's opened up a lot of dialogue and just trying to get people to look at, you know, uh, pathways that we use and programs that need to look at it. There is one more thing that we're looking at. I just thought about it. Um, there was a concern by one of our counselors about the uh, jail, the jail museum and accessibility. And uh, we'll be meeting out there on Thursday with the staff and our engineer to try to see what we can do to address those concerns that are there for accessibility to the jail museum. Are there other counselors with questions for you? Right, well, seeing no other questions, thank you, Susan, for, for attending tonight and doing the report for the commission. We greatly appreciate your service and your continued advocacy. And thank you, Bev, as well, for being here for the staff. So appreciate you supporting them as well as they've gone through a lot of changes and have grown over the past year. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. thank you. With that, you'll move to actually, are there any other reports or words of praise or sponsor the council? I don't think anyone else is here for like sustainable CT or tourism or any of those groups. So, um, 7B would be reports of town council liaisons. I'll start on this side with Colleen. That's what you tell me to check. I know. <laughs> Change things up. Jeez. <laughs> um, where do I start? So, Tammy. With our, our committee on February 24th, and two of the things are on the agenda tonight. So I think there's three of us very excited about that. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing we did talk about was the mental health task force, and that that was here because you could probably um, fill in if I miss anything. So currently we postpone that to further um, 
those and uh, Maureen more information because if I understood right, it's more like two roles in one little, one big recommendation from the mental health task force. Um, and I think, I believe Maureen is invited in somebody else from, it's called the village to a mental health task force um, to also help tell, tell them what they offer, also offer. Beth, did I miss anything? No, I didn't. Yeah. Uh, no, I think it was just we, we, Maureen also talked about making sure when we meet with the people from the village that we're looking at um, the items that they're offering and that they yeah. fit with the town. Yeah. And also because the town is going to be administering this pro these programs, making sure that it's the right mix of programs and resources um, to look at. And she said there was also a possibility for a grant with the village program so on top of what we're looking to kind of engage from the mental health perspective. Before we brought that forward to the town council, we just really want to make sure it's a final, a good mm -hmm. firm plan that um, that the staff also agrees with, and then it'll come forward for review. Yeah, yeah. so that's where we're at with that. Thank you, Tammy, for filling <laughs> in. Um, Tom meets um, next Monday, um, Board of Ed wanted to bring up is somebody going to start doing April or am I still doing April? I know I asked you before. I'll have to double check my emails. I thought we had someone covered for April. I thought maybe we switched I the think, house. Yeah, I month. think I got yeah, it. Yeah, I think you guys swapped months. So. And then May and June. Not, not that I love, I love the Board of Ed, but I'm feeling you feel like it's, it's time. time. <laughs> Why you look at me? I'm just saying, look at your um, I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. I think check, that is I'll hard. I'll check my spread. We have a good layout through May and June. <laughs> is it time yet? <laughs> is it time? <laughs> it has got to be the day by now. Who still owes me one, though? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you right, covered anyway, for that last really... one, but I, I'll cover today for. Uh... <laughs> I actually, that's all I have. No. Okay. Oh, because the mental, we couldn't make the mental health task force last night. Steve, could I just. Yeah, of course. Counselor. Yeah. Steve. <laughs> Councilor Steve, yes. Chairman Steve. Um, <laughs> I spoke with the superintendent of schools today. I thought this was a good opportunity to at least let the public be aware that I think he was going to be changing the meeting to fully remote just for tomorrow night because of the impeding storm. Oh, so, right. storm yeah. so I wanted to mention that while we're here. And uh, I'm, I'm sure he sent out a broadcast and uh, notification to people, but I felt this was a good place to. No, oh, thanks for the update on that. Uh, Councilor Luma, let's work my around. Okay. Well, just sort of building on as far as uh, what uh, uh, Ms. Udicek said, as far as the Board of Education that we did, they also did cover the uh, our joint meeting. I mean, I think everybody's been there, so no need to cover that. That was covered. Uh, that was my one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he took that. He's covered that for you. <laughs> yeah. um, but no, I, I still owe you one. Uh, I'll cover one tomorrow. Oh, you can do tomorrow? I can do it. Um, <laughs> as far as um, anything else, uh, that there's the, uh, the, although it wasn't a formal meeting, that I know that the uh, Veterans Recognition Commission uh, did meet with uh, Ms. Hancock and that, um, that they did discuss issues regarding the budget and a bunch of other things. So I know it was very, Fruitful, very meaningful, and uh, very much appreciated by the commission, uh, considering that they are basically looking at this as uh, starting from the ground ground up again. We're actually uh, doing recognition, as I said before, that they're actually looking at doing programs and doing support uh, for our town veterans. Where I never realized, but we have fifteen thousand, or not fifteen, we have uh, twenty. It was over fifteen hundred. Uh, veterans that were within town, um, which is, I think, more than any of us ever anticipated. Uh, and so we're looking at doing uh, offering services for them. Uh, and then uh, as for the doing the split with the um, planning and zoning that I was not able to, uh, to, uh, to make the last meeting that, that I was covering, so i uh, referred to the uh, minutes. Okay. Thank you. I, I apologize. Katie's got to do tomorrow night. Yeah, I was going to take okay. it in March. <laughs> okay. Oh, then I, you know, well, I've got April anyway. That was mine. So. Okay. Uh, 
Unless you want to go. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> Thank you. Okie dokie. I uh, have one other thing from the ARPA meeting. Um, we, this was, this was something that I'm glad actually Colin didn't say it, so I didn't say it. But we canceled the March 24th meeting and we are doing a special meeting on the 23rd because on the 24th, my daughter will be graduating from the state of Connecticut, Lisa Cat. So I will not be available to anybody except my daughter and the state police. So <laughs> we are uh, to accommodate that, which I thank Colleen and, and Lisa very much for. Um, and then I had a PCC meeting. Uh, we discussed the name of the Memorial Day Parade. We set that forward. It is going to be remembering our fallen heroes. It is going to have a float aspect this year. Um, which is good. So people will be able to register for us again. And we're looking to try to, um, well, they're looking to try to incorporate a couple of new things, which I'm kind of thinking of a bike gang, like having all little kids being able to ride in their decorated bikes for the Memorial Day. Okay. So I'm pretty excited about that. I thought That's it was really cool. cool. I said they can walk up front with me if they want to, but they didn't think that was a good idea. Um, <laughs> we also <laughs> reviewed and amended all the parade guidelines. Um, so all of that's out there and they're going to start advertising for the uh, Memorial Day Parade coming up soon. So everybody keep an eye out. It's going to be a Sunday as it normally is. It's going to be out. It's going to be big. It's going to be back to the way. That's all that I have right now. Thanks for reading. No meetings to report on this week. All right. Councillor Khan, any meetings to report on? Uh, EDC. And they took majority, they spoke about uh, housing, affordable housing. That uh, what, the, what the plan is doing and the uh, council wants to do. And, uh, and I hope on uh, March 31st, they will be there and keep continuing with that conversation. And that's about it. Yeah, great. Thank you. And Councilman Murray? We had a Birch Grove meeting last week. We have a few last change orders that we got confirmed that they're eligible for reimbursement. So the last few things will be taken care of during April break. And hopefully, uh, if everything has arrived from the back order, we will be able to start project closeout. And then for myself, I have had no meetings. I believe conservation is this Thursday. I think the next one will be during one of our budget meetings and public hearings. So. I'll be able to make that okay. So that being said, we are on to item eight, new business 8.1, consideration of resolution to use ARPA funds to purchase a back call. Ready? Yep. Okay. Go for it, Lisa. Thank um, you. As Councilor Yudchek mentioned, that on February 24th, and we actually discussed two pieces of equipment that's currently in our capital plan. The uh, second piece is the next agenda item, but uh, I'll go through the first one, um, which was the back ball piece of equipment, which is used to comply with our MS4 mandates through the state. It'll help us be able to clean storm drains, keep, be able to use a camera to go inside. We uh, recently had a situation here at Town Hall but that probably would have been helpful to be able to try to see what we couldn't see anyway, but um, with some of our sewer lines. But um, so anyway, the ARPA subcommittee reviewed the information about the capital project and would like to recommend that the town council go ahead and use ARPA funds to pay a piece of equipment rather than putting it through the capital program. Are there any questions from council members? Councilman Murray? How much does it cost? Oh, I do apologize. I, $495,000. Sorry, we didn't put that in the agenda item. That was getting my question. I think that was my question for item two as well, just to clarify costs. 495000 Other questions? Oh, I had another one. Oh, go ahead. Our, um, Will paying for this upfront allow us to uh, do better to plan for its replacement? Since we won't be making regular payments on the machine, we we did discuss that during the meeting, and um, 
at some point going forward, once our debt starts falling off the books, we plan on doing a lot of that. Currently, we have to get through this. There's a few years where we have the increase because of the Birch Grove project, the, uh, the firehouse projects that are going on. So we won't be able to start it within the next year or two, but a few years down the road when the debt starts falling off, we get to a point, my recommendation is going to be that the town council, rather than reducing all of the debt, is maybe start putting funds aside for um, pay as you go appreciation to replace these things in the future. So how much are we saving on a yearly basis by paying for it up front? I don't have the amortization schedule with me, but um, you're, you're roughly 3% per year. Okay, and 20 years. I can't even calculate it in my okay. head right now. Well, I'm trying. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's, um, you know, for... 20 years. Sure, yeah. So, so I mean, you know, there is a substantial savings by doing that. It certainly helped the debt management plan because they have the debt management plan all recalculated. Thank you. $32,175 approximately over 20 years with the, third, with, the, with the compound interest over it, approximately. So, okay, so we can't take that $30,000 because it's not even budgeted yet. <laughs> okay. That's too bad. It was part of the well, it wasn't the debt, but mm -hmm. I don't remember. It, what will happen mm -hmm. is now there's less of an impact on debt, which will get us to that drop down quicker. And yes, you could use it if that's what the town council does in the future. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to approve the resolution as outlined in 8.2. So, so moved by Council Uba, seconded by Councilman Murray. Uh, since we're all in the room, we can do a, a vote <laughs> by voice. So all those in favor, vote signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? That is unanimous. Thank you. So moving on to 8.2, the consideration of resolution to use ARPA funds to purchase a street sweeper. Lisa, and, feel free to this one. Sure. And this is the second piece of equipment that we discussed, I think, and I don't have I rushed to get these into the packet. I do apologize. I think it was around two hundred fifty-five thousand in the um, in the budget book. I could look that up afterwards. Um, this is a street sweeper, which ours is pretty much um, not working at this point. It's in very poor condition, and what this will allow is to also comply with the MS four mandates of debris in the roads that goes into the storm drains uh, to keep the roads clean. And that, that is mandated that we have to do that. And by trying to outsource at this time, it's very difficult to get companies to come in to do the street sweeping. Yeah, they're booked up and it's hard to get them to be able to help us with what we need. So at least if we have our street sweeper getting getting more of it done. And the committee also recommend moving forward with removing it from the capital program and having the IPA funds purchase it. Any questions or comments? Councilor Muccio? So this was in year two of the capital plan. It's about $275,000. And a key note here is as of right now in the budget, we're spending $50,000 a year on contracted services. So we'll have to keep that $50,000 for the because we're anticipating it's gonna take at least a year to order and get the sweeper in. But then we should, I'm gonna put it in my notes, Lisa, yeah, in year two, it. see the $50,000 reduction directly from our budget. At that yeah. point though, Katie, good point to say, if we look at the two pieces of equipment, both the sweeper and the back all at three quarters of a million plus the compound interest divided by the 20 years, just happens to be $48,750, so. Well, um, there still would need to be some outsourced services because of the size of the town. This would just, we've always assisted with the outsourcing. Now we're at a point where we can't even assist to get any of it done. And it's been very difficult to hire outsourced people. So 
I can, you know, speak with the public works director. Unfortunately, he's on medical leave right now, but um, doing well. But could try to get at least that on the agenda to talk about with him. Yeah, I'd like to see us if we can be doing this ourselves. I know I would have been Tom a long time back when we used to do it all on our own. Like this, it was a we had a schedule of when your roads were going to be swept. We knew that in um we can save the fifty thousand dollars, the fifty thousand dollars can be better to replacement. Right. So that's just the accountant in me. There's 275 for the total 275. Yeah, 275. Thank you for that clarification. Okay. Um any other questions from council members? I was just going to add, I think for, for this as well as I can leave it back all but just focus on a street sweeper. Was there any discussion about like it's the impacts of climate change? I know that was one of like when we first met with the Arbor Committee last term, there was a discussion that sometimes some of these purchases or expenditures had to deal with climate change or anything of that nature. So with this, like the storms and I, I, the, the flooding has been terrible. So the street sweeper sure, that well, would be well, that will certainly to help too that. because yeah. With storm drains backing up, um, and that, that we have over three three thousand catch basins in town, so this will help at least address some of that because that's where a lot of the backup happens. Um, I, I don't recall any specific information about any type of. Okay. At the chair, which I'll mention later, there were a lot of questions about climate change and energy and environmental related requests. So I just was keeping that in the back sure. of my mind for any future ARPA considerations. But no, I thank you. It's a good point as well as in the town wide. I assumed it was a town wide street sweeper program. And I think I remember that growing up that yeah, it was, it, it was yeah. kind of like it, it was almost like the the uh, fire truck parade. Exactly. You would know when they were coming by. So like, like, you didn't have anything up, near the curb exactly. that you get knocked over. And when I bought my home. house, like I knew we got street sweeped may yeah. so i knew that like it was, it was a rotational exactly. kind of thing exactly it was we all got it at a certain time but no, and i do like that recommendation maybe getting an update once it's officially approved having scott come in to kind of talk about what that plan would look like sure or he could, during his budget um workshop yeah with you we could probably have him discuss it sounds good are there any other questions from council members all right seeing none i enter in a motion to approve the resolutions outlined in 8.2 Motion. So moved by Councilman Minuccio. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Councilman Murray. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that is unanimous. Moving on to 8.3. Appointments to vacancies on various municipal boards and commissions. So we have 8.3A, appointment to the Zoning Board of Appeals alternate. And I believe we might have guests in the audience for that. Like to introduce yourself, feel free. I'm Jean Fisk, and I live over on the other side of town on Baptist Road. I pretty much grew up here, so. And she makes wonderful sourdough bread. <laughs> <laughs> Just gonna put that out there. <laughs> okay, sorry, that was 8.3b as well. So I'll do, we can do both at the same time. And I do see Julie Burns is also on Zoom. If you wanna unmute Julie and say hi and introduce yourself. Sure. Um, so good evening, everyone. My name is Julie Burns. Um, I have lived in Tallinn for years. Um, a little bit about me as I have a 14 year old daughter with a rare disease. I also hope to bring a diverse set of skills to this commission, not only as a mom to a child with a disability, but I've also been a nurse practitioner for several years working on underserved communities. So advocating for individuals and families and their needs. And in my current job, I am a director of a patient advocacy relations team. And I've also served in the military for 15 years. Uh, look forward to being part of this commission and I thank you for your time tonight. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Jean. Are there any questions? Council Luba? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I just want to say that uh, that this is a matter where uh, uh, Mr. Khan and I have had substantial discussions over this and we were blessed to have a number of people apply uh, for this opening. Um, and it was uh, always, as always, uh, as you, Mr. Chair, know, when we were first setting this up, it's difficult to go through and act one person when you have a group of people that are just so uh, so qualified. And so uh, I, uh, I appreciate everybody uh, and their uh, interest in, uh, in this commission, as well as uh, we have uh, openings on the uh, uh, mental health task force, which we're actually going through and then screening people out 
Uh, and I think that it's a, uh, Mr. Khan and I had a, uh, after a substantial interaction regarding this, I think that we, uh, that we are very fortunate to have, uh, have uh, come forward on this, uh, on this commission. And uh, I would endorse uh, both members uh, for both the Zoning Board of Appeals as well as the Commission on People with Disabilities. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Elizabeth. Dr. Nuccio? Uh, Ms. Burns, thank you very much. I don't know whether or not you make good sourdough, so I can't say that about you. <laughs> but I can definitely thank you for your service and for your advocacy. Um, your resume is beyond impressive, and I know the Commission will be very lucky to have you. And Jean, thank you. <laughs> thank you for coming forward, both of you. We're lucky to have such great people in town that come through, well, forward to help up with these commissions. No, I absolutely agree. I, I'd echo those comments as well as encourage anyone in the audience and share with your friends that there are plenty of openings and the email vacancies at town.org. Sammy and Lou will screen that and get you on a future agenda so you can help with all the boards and commissions that need people serving. So uh, with that being said, I think a motion to approve it's laid on 8.3 A and 8.3 B. I'll make that motion. So moved by Councilor Lewis, seconded by Councilman Nuccio. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none. Oh. Yeah, that was fine. Or sorry, Councilman Nuccio. My apologies. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> fix it. Yeah, clarify at least it was blue followed by Colin. <laughs> All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That is unanimous. Welcome. Congratulations. Thank you for serving. <laughs> <laughs> item nine, there is no old business. So item number 10 is the report of the interim town manager. So Lisa, I see that that was published in March. So go ahead. Okay. Um, just a couple of things to point out. I am in the final stretch of putting the budget together. I've got my draft copy printed. I'm going through it looking for typos and there, there probably will be a little mistake here or there, but we'll try to catch them all before the final printed copies are done. Um, as far as getting printed copies to you tomorrow, it may not happen, but I will get a link to the online version that you'd be able to pull up, but we will get printed copies out to, for each and every one of you, unless there's anyone here who doesn't want it. It's almost 400 pages. On it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> By all means, we, we will be printing them, but um, if anybody doesn't want it, I'll just do one less or two less or whatever. Just let me know. Um, so that hopefully will be sometime tomorrow. Stay tuned. I will send you the link as soon as I'm comfortable with it all going out, but I, I'm hoping that you'll all be happy with what you see. And if you're not, then Whip me with a wet noodle or something. <laughs> but we've, uh, I got to say, all the department heads really worked hard, came together, we tried not to put a lot of increases in unless they absolutely needed to. Some actually reduced their budgets. Um, so, well, I'll be getting it out to you tomorrow. Um, in addition, I know there was a lot of uh, requests as to how the fire project, the fire station project is doing. I didn't update and timeline um, as the first item under the town manager's report within that report. Um, we'll be meeting in a couple of days. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I won't be able to get into the meeting just because I'm trying to finish the budget, but I know Beverly and Leslie and uh, Chuck Eaton, our engineer, will be getting together to go over things and, and uh, John will be involved at, in the future to handle they need to meet with Chuck so they're they're going to go through a lot of the documents but a lot of the uh, draft construction design stuff has been being worked on um, now they're going to be reviewing a lot of documentation and try to get moving forward so that we can start getting the bid specs out um, we also and it was announced uh, one of the Finance officer's certificate of um, achievement for uh, distinguished budget reporting. And um, you know, thank you to all the staff that helped put it all together, as well as 
getting it out there and making it happen. I think uh, they were very impressed. This was the first year that they saw our online version of the budget, as well as the PDF copy that they got, but they, they commended us on, on the document. So How many times in the world does that make now? That was probably about 14, 15 years, maybe. Oh, okay. the, uh, the Certificate of Excellence in Financial Reporting is probably getting close to 30 years. Right. And that all that helps us too. We're a bond reading. You know, it shows that we really put effort into it. When they go look at a lot of our financial information, there's a lot of data there that they can use. I don't think I have anything else. One quick question about the firehouse project. Are there any concerns with everything going on in the world? I mean, still with any, the effects of COVID, but now it's going on globally with Ukraine and all that. If there's any concern about materials and construction and labor related? But we, I think what we have to do is wait and see when we go out to bid as to what happens. Uh, we're still waiting on the, the uh, renovation project and doing the two Morton type buildings first. We'll see what happens after that point. It could very well be that we won't have sufficient funds, but we will, we've got to wait and see what happens with the supplies that are out there going up. We recently, we have an ambulance that was on order. We have a contract in place and they tried to come back to us to request more money and we, and we have a contract. So I don't know where that's going to go, but you know, if we have to get our attorney involved, we will. And then for the other fire station, the foundation issues, is that pretty much stable? Like, you know, it's okay to prioritize yeah. 338. That's it for me. Are there any other questions from counselors? So, <laughs> Councilor Connor? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the only question is like uh, the firehouse. Is there any way we can uh, wait uh, until everything everything comes down? The prices and everything else. That's what we estimate. Uh, I don't know about how bad. Because we have a bonding authorization in place, there's a timeline as to when uh, issue the debt and spend down the funds. So there's there's a um, problem with that as far as the federal laws is so we can't really delay too much going forward with that certainly we can yeah i can speak with our attorney to see how far but they're they're really in the middle of getting ready to to go out now they've been doing a lot of work and that would mean having if we had to do it all over again or you know if anything should change but we could discuss it. Are there any other questions for council members? What's the status of the fire truck? It's um, just give me an update. I'll have to get back to you. It is definitely on order. It's just uh, with the delay with the economy right now and, and COVID delaying everything, it, uh, I think only part of it has been delivered, but the other part hasn't. But I can get you a full report. Matter of fact, he may have even put it in there, let me check. Nothing in here. All right, I'll get, I'll get back to you with that. No, I think that's, that'll be. Any questions from counselors? I have one more about that. So Lisa, the assessor's position, the technician position, um, I think it was saying it's down until March. Is that something that needs to be brought back to the council? I know there's some discussion about whether or not it's or modified to be more appealing for applicants, or is it good as it is? Jason and I are going to meet. He's just still to the point where now that he finished the grand list, there's a lot of 
stuff that he's got to finish up in the office and we do plan to meet to discuss it. I think he would like to entertain some possible changes to the position, but he really needs to see what the with that. And he and I were going to meet with Mike Wilkinson and discuss it and see what we would need to put into place to maybe make it more attractive. We've gone out quite a few times now. We are unable to attract, um, well, we've attracted some talented people, but then other towns have positions open and better benefits, more salary, and the people have been going for those positions. So I mean, we try to make an offer right away, and they said, well, you know, I've already been interviewing with this other one, and that's that, so then we have to go back out again. Okay. So we'll, we'll get back to you on that. Okay, sounds good. All right, seeing no other questions, we'll move on to the adoption of minutes laid out in 11.1 through 11.3. I was just going to get a quick note. We did receive an email, or Lisa received an email that was then forwarded to myself and Vice Chair Beacon about Minutes, there was a reference to the historic district commission receiving a grant and it should have actually been the historical society you don't have to change the minutes they just requested it be noted in these minutes that um that just had to be clear that they wanted that clarified so uh, that being said i would entertain a motion to approve the minutes as laid out 11.1 through 11.3 um, by councilman murray is there a second like like all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Mentions is unanimous. Uh, correspondence to council, item number 12. Sure, we've received um, 13 emails that have come in uh, from residents, uh, two on masks. Uh, that's five on the budget, one on wildfires, one Project, two on water issues, one on sustainable energy, one on electric vehicle chargers, and uh, one on, um, I'm sorry, I'm blanking, the last one that came through, which was a request for a citation. Okay. Thank you. And then item number 13, Chairperson Group. Pretty good chairs meeting last week. Had a couple of residents come on for a variety of topics. It was actually had a pretty full length discussion, I actually went over the time. But yeah, again, a lot of it, and we receive a lot of the emails from Phil Newley, so thank you. But a lot of it was around energy efficiency, use of the ARPA funds, any of those concerns, anything you can do for electric vehicles or making our new buildings or existing buildings more energy efficient. So that was a lot of the conversations, as well as some conversations about Birch Grove, the Miracle Field. So it was a, it was a great discussion. Of that came out. Um, just a quick reminder, we're in the last week of the town manager application, so we should be getting those applications before us soon to review as a council. And then obviously, as Lisa mentioned, the budget will be published on the 9th and get digital copies followed by, by physical print copies and the budget meetings. Encourage residents to come out and listen in and the hearing will be at the end of the month to you know, provide your input. So we really, and anytime email about the budget as well. Um, on, I believe, alluded to, there'll be a joint meeting with the PZC and the EDC on the 31st about affordable housing and the potential affordable housing trust. So that is it for me for the chair's report. So at that point, I'll move to item 14, communication and petitions from council persons. You want to take it? Yeah. Right. Councilman Nugio? Um, I just want to reiterate, I back at the end of January, I had about a few things I hadn't heard back on any of them yet. I have here that I was gonna second Lou's removal of the emergency declaration, but Lou didn't make it. So I guess I'm gonna make it and then you can say, but um, to review the removal of the emergency declaration. Um, also, I still wanted to find out if there's a way we're gonna handle the, the wall art. And since we're back in here now, being able to have that back there would be good. Um, wasn't sure when we're gonna have the information on ordinance 60 yet. And I wanted to, I know Krog has gotten the new batch of money on regionalization and backroom town stuff. Uh, so we'll, I would like to engage Krog again to see we got that grant before COVID hit. 
to look at regionalization of the back office study between the Board of Ed and the Town Council. So I'd like to see if we can either get that grant back. Have to find out because they told me it wasn't going to happen. Well, I'm pretty sure they just got like $625,000. For regionalization specifically, I'll find yeah. out. Okay, I can help you if you don't have that. Um, and then Susan brought up a good thing today. I'd, I'd like to get some more information on what it means for the town to join the ADA coalition. We did, we are. We are actually, actually, uh, John had signed up for it. Oh, okay. And then when I called, they said, Oh, you can be a member too because of John. So we are, we so we that. are, yeah, right. Yeah. Can we maybe just find out what does that? Oh, there are a lot of training, and actually, I, I just got the thing today, and uh, an email is going to take a few. Even though Mike Wilson's been a DAD coordinator, I still want to. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah. All right, so that'd be good if we yeah. can, if if you can maybe just. And I put in my budget to join for next year. Oh, good. Okay, that's it for me. Um, I'll just respond also just really quick, and I'll at least okay. respond. I know Ordinance 60, I think, is for our second meeting in March. Right. But while our, I think, was an ongoing conversation. Ashley Lundgren reached out to me as well about that because they were curious about mm -hmm. how the town and the board could work together to maybe incorporate some students' artwork. Yeah. Like even I think the there's a student that won an award for fire safety and they're like in the state finals. So they thought about having either a print or having that at some point framed and presented in the council chambers. So yeah, we talked yeah. about that. Like what that the post office used to do, and my daughters had some some art put up in the post office, like an art award thing in the lobby, but I, it kind of got really convoluted and we were talking about like $10,000 to put something back there, which I don't yeah. think we need. We can put some cork boards back there and some nice framed pictures and stuff. And so. I think when we spoke, Lisa, at one point about it, I think we're going to look into what the library does because they have those I think, little cubby nooks. There's like little rows that they can hang wire right. and then it can kind of self suspend and it can hold various things so Just something to put back there. I love cool. the like old men picture, but we can we can it was it was a while back when we talked we incredibly busy, so we can touch base on it again, but something to consider. Okay. But I know, Lisa, if you want, if you have anything you want to respond to for. Um, well, one was the Ordinance 60, and yep. it's on the agenda coming up. Um, the the wall art, I had a question as to, I didn't realize I was supposed to handle on that. So I'm. Hmm. Well, supposed to be a conversation. No, I, I wasn't I, sure what we were with that. So it's a I, good reminder. I thought that there were people like working um, together. One and then they'd let me know what they needed. So, okay. um, if I, if whoever's in charge of, I guess it's you, Tammy. If hmm? <laughs> sure. no, I mean to let me know as to who I should be reaching out to to discuss this as superintendent. Um, some of well, this goes back to it was uh, Ashley and I had talked about it before mm -hmm. before the COVID the whole incident with COVID happened, and like I said, we were pretty much thinking about court boards or. That we could display the kids' artwork, like kindergarten class, first grade, second grade, and kind of rotate it through. Mm -hmm. And it was simple. It, we weren't looking for, like I said, Scott Lappin came back the first time with like a ten thousand dollar thing or something, and both Ashley and I were like, "This was before me." Yes, this yeah. was okay. back. Yeah, yeah, this was back, like, back was right before COVID, right? And it was we don't need to go crazy. We just Thank want you. to put like something up where we can put pictures of the kids' art. All right, so um, basic, basically, so not like ten thousand dollars. <laughs> no, four hundred dollars, two cork boards. We'll, we'll nice look at something. Board. I mean, you definitely want to have something nice back yeah. there too, though. Yeah, and this is your council. I mean, we have... But you want something that you can change it. Well, we do, right? Have... You want something that you can. Well, if that was back there, that'd be great because then you could put artwork up and you could ex and change it out yeah, every month. We might even be able to have our public works team. I'd have to see before. Yeah. They are a little bit down on staff right now. But relocate um, that. But maybe well not relocate it, but they built this. Okay. So maybe they build one back there. there. Build one back there. Move the the guy picture over, but like Eagle yeah. Scout. There you go. Like because then you can go. something that you can modify monthly with kindergarten oh, one month, yeah. first grade another okay. month, yeah. high school at one point, you know, something that we can just put the artwork up there. It's more community that can the council. Right. It displays, you know, yeah. the kids' artwork. So, all right, and then getting it, the artwork would be through the superintendent. That would go through the yeah through the board of ed superintendent. You know, the art classes would pick 
you know, there's 12 months in a year. There's technically what 13 years. Well, we come pre K, we got more. We could split the board. We could split the board. And in the high school, it's not, you don't have to go by year, it's by art class. So, you know, you can do painting one time. You can do Maybe more rain could help you raise with that. Or contact Every month, you could pick a different grade mm -hmm. to showcase. How about employees? You really want to draw? Go ahead. Cool. Throw a sticky note up there. The <laughs> I yeah. do too. Well, the clerk can really be <laughs> yeah. there too. There you go. We can do maybe oh, have an do, employee. We'll do staff day. on the yeah. other wall. You know, we can do kids back there, staff over there. You know, make it like the men. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I can't paint. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody can paint by number. Right. By number. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other requests? Right. Councilor Luba. Thank you. Uh, well, I will uh, second the uh, the motion uh, or make the request, I should say, uh, to to review uh, the removal of the emergency declaration. I think that we're at that point now where um, that we're, the governor's office is is moving on, that the executive orders are finally coming to the end, and I think it's time for us to to review that. So, uh, respectfully. Second, the request to have, uh, have that added on to an agenda. Um, one other thing that I, I also uh, was approached by, um, cornered by, I should say, uh, some residents on uh, an article that came out in the JR regarding the, uh, the, the note, the uh, statement that was sent out uh, regarding Birch Grove. Um, and that uh, I just wanted it clear, and I've talked to the, uh, to the members, which the residents about it issue where it said that there was a statement issued by the Board of Education and the Town Council. I believe that it's been corrected and uh, rectified through the JI, that it was uh, by the superintendent and the town manager's office after consultation with uh, both legal uh, legal advisors, the, uh, uh, the attorney for the town, as well as for the Board of Education. Just wanted it clear on there because people were very, they're like, they were asking if they, they never heard it discussed during a council meeting and that there's some, uh, some concern regarding it. A minor issue, but it was something that I just wanted to make sure that it was taken care of. It, it, it has been rectified. I think it's been cleared up and settled very well, but it's just a matter of I just needed to put that on the record that that was something that was brought forward and that that the uh, uh, but it has been addressed and said to JI. So, and just please be advised that I never said it was town council or board of education. Um, there was a mistake in how it was. Unfortunately, the minutes were right. The, the, our, the reporter read the minutes. So then he said that I confirmed it. And I said, I didn't confirm that it was them. I told you it was a joint from the town side and the board side, but it was not a vote by the town council. Yeah. And, and he retracted or corrected it in, in there. Yeah, and not look at, I mean, and that's not, it's no blame whatsoever. I mean, I read the statement and I read, uh, you know, I, that there is some. I guess room for interpretation on it. So, yeah. uh, but I just wanted to make note of that on the record so that people can say that, you know, that they can see that it's been addressed. Yes. And I, I, again, I do apologize for all the stress that it may have caused both the Board of Education and the Town Council. It certainly was never met. No. And um, just the timing of things that came out, it, so now it made people of, think yeah. that. Mm -hmm. well, why don't you say that? And you know, certainly we will be getting to a point where we'll be dealing with everything and mm -hmm. moving forward. Thank you. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Council Luba. Are there any other requests from council members? I uh, see so Councilman Unicek check followed by Councilman Murray. Um, Councilman Amy Kagel. First, because I have wait, never mind. Okay. <laughs> 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 I apologize. <laughs> I did go to a board of ed meeting. <laughs> yep. I'm so sorry. I had flash pack of time. They <laughs> did remove their mask, obviously. And I did want to mention um, the student that won the fire truck, the fire the, um, award. Fire safety. Thank you. Um, and in the board of ed minutes, is her name, she's fourth grade PIS. Her name is Ariana. Right, it's D. I can spell it for you, Lisa, if you want it. D O N G A R E. 
Um, she was selected as the Tallinn County's first place winner in the Connecticut Fire Marshals Association Poster Contest. Um, so I apologize, I didn't say it earlier, time has slipped away, so I think that's pretty exciting. I did send, um, I think Ms. Hancock, Vice Chair uh, Reagan and uh, Chair Jones about if there's something we could do. Guys, her, um, I'm not sure. I've already reached out to um, our fire chief and fire marshal, and I know they wanted to try to wait for the, was the one that she won was a regional one, and then there's a state one, I think, after that, and they wanted to wait and see if she ends okay. up with the state one as well, and do something together uh, at, a, at a council meeting, so yeah. Yeah. we are looking excited and like that someone said I could go maybe the first picture on the backboard. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Spotlight. Yeah. I understand it was really nice. What, what I didn't get to did. see it. I listened and watched. I couldn't see the actual poster. So I would love to see the poster as well. But um and one other thing I know we had a joint um water commission meeting last night. I said it last to I just hoping that there'll be some long-term planning as other houses might come up or people might more people might start coming forward. So just something I think to keep in the back of my mind and I mentioned it to you last night, Lisa. So because um, I was looking at our goals as I usually do to remind myself, keep me on my toes at infrastructure. I don't know if homes fall under that, um, but I think my home has a still <laughs> <our> infrastructure. <laughs> Just looking at those goals and the, another one was water concerns to advocate the state level and again, Chair Jones, the Crumbland Foundation yep. <laughs> after. So that's all. And I love Tammy's idea with the artwork and the water people. So that's it. All right. Thank you, Councilman Murray. I, um, Colleen Tuck. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all your thunder, huh? <laughs> um, I think be talking about um, expanding town water to other areas of town as we've started the process of addressing one area um, and as we know there are others so mm -hmm. last night uh, Bev asked a really great question of connect water about expanding um, their system but I think whatever we can do Commission and uh, potentially Connecticut Water to make sure that we're not leaving any residents without potable water. Thank you, Councilman. Thank Ray. you for the update on the town manager search. Oh, yeah. um, and Ordinance 60, those are, that's my list. All right, no problem. So maybe our Water Commission questions are directed more at this John Reagan since Steve has to excuse himself with any water issue. <laughs> Certainly receive input, but yeah, when it comes to things on the, uh, the agenda, obviously, I'm kind of quite sure you can cover some of it. So, yeah. I don't know if that was deeper part of it. Like, if we're talking about the Connecticut water part, you are not serviced yeah. by Connecticut water, like, and there's stuff that's happening with the Crystal Lake Road area that is not in any way, shape, or form going to affect you where yeah. you are. So, I would think the Connecticut water conversations you could be part of, yeah. it's the Tolland water ones that you can't. Yeah. I'll have to touch base with Lisa. I think one is just the. I think there's been an ongoing evolution of what the attorney's advice is. So I probably follow theirs first. But no, I definitely appreciate the input that there is a delineation. Always on a side of caution. Yeah, yeah. always on a side of caution. All right. Are there any other counselor comments? Um, Lisa, I want to cover a question to you. I don't know if since we are on the water, do we do we buy the water from? Uh, I think to as a Thailand water, uh, um, work. how does it work? Yeah, um, yes and no. <laughs> we do buy some water from Connecticut water and then we resell it. We also have our own reservoirs that we manage. We have our own well system. Well system. That that he does about two, or two to 300. Uh, with the other courses, we extend it to when the water line 
Uh, we took that portion off our well system and we purchased water and the Tory Road. Right. And then we have to do with their weight a little bit of a month charge. And the uh, billing goes to Tavern or to Connecticut Water? Connecticut Water is our operator. They do our billing for us. Uh, the funds come here right. into our water account. Uh, second question is the same subject about the money. And it's how come that the I'm charged a little bit more than surrounded area because connected water is uh, charged what? Why are we charging zero, more? 0 0.8 or 0 0.7, whatever it is. And then I think the town is, uh, the, they are charging, I think two, two, two cents or three cents, two and a half cents. If you're asking, we charge because we have to pay Connecticut water to operate our system plus do all our billing for us. So they're we'd be at a, a deficit with the rate. So it cost us money to purchase it and cost us money to, to put the bills out. Administrative rate, yeah. Uh, the last question on the same subject is, uh, I think I did an ice cube that uh, last night, whatever we passed that uh, how long that process will take to apply for uh, grant. And then at the same time, I mean, are we, who's going to apply for that uh, grant? Uh, your department, uh, them? Uh, what, what we are going to do, first of all, the, the uh, loan application with the hopefully loan forgiveness will be, has to be applied for by the end of March, by March 31st, by noon, I think. And we will be having Connecticut Water prepare that document with Beverly and Leslie, our, our uh, grants project manager. So between Connecticut Water and, and them working together, they will try to put the, well, they, they will put the application together. Um, what I had mentioned last night that if this does go forward and it becomes a project and you know we deal with all the funding and concerns and make sure everybody, survey out, um, then we will probably need to include some sort of a project manager for a higher level type project manager engineer to be able to administer this project and move forward with it because of the magnitude of everything that's involved. And the staff doesn't have that sort of experience to be able to do that. You know, my, my experience is as we were uh, putting it pipe, pipe to the Yukon, I mean, it's right in front of my business. I think uh, on some spots, they, they get like, uh, they were engineers, they were supervisors, standing right in front of it. And on some spots, they would dig out maybe two times or three times because it's inch higher, inch lower, whatever it is. Like, uh, they they were two supervisors and genius standing right there, and they were just standing there like a. I don't have a name for it, but I'd like to. But <laughs> <laughs> you're on public TV, Sammy. <laughs> so it's just like uh, what then was the purpose of hiring us uh, high level engineers or whatever to do the job. So, it means that so you, obviously somebody is paying for that process totally understand one time, what you're saying. second time, or third time. So yeah, totally understand what you're saying with that. But Beverly, so let the, would you let, like to... let, the, let the contractors be responsible and we can save whatever it is. But it's not the saving, it's like yeah. doing your job one and once for all. The, the I, I get what you're saying, the construction and, and the engineers. It has more to do with making sure we get our reimbursement, if we get our audits clean. Um, it's uh, the Buy American provisions are very challenging. I did it on a small project. Uh, it's just that when you get the grant, you want to make sure you get all the money back, as we did with Perch Grove and other projects. And that's where the challenge is with the grant funding. Uh, one of them, when we did the other 
in uh, water from the high school to the middle school. And we had to actually have an engineer look at every single invoice to determine the Buy American, where every not every bowl, every, and that's what I meant, came from in the, the origin of where it was, it was made. And we had to document why we couldn't get American. And I mean, that just took so much time. And I do understand this, like, but it's like at the, their office was right behind my business. And majority of them, there was a five engineers, mm -hmm. not one, not two, five engineers. Imagine that five engineers for, and that project went for two years. So there was, what are you talking about? Uh, at least a million dollars for their salaries just to sit there, uh, to stand there and uh, look at that whole. And that's we that's not about what we would be hiring for, for. It's something like that's that. That's of uh, Connecticut. That was Connecticut Water doing that. They hired the contractor, and that was they were paying that. But you yeah, talking about us. you are talking about billions of dollars just to uh, for those I, I, engineers and just to it's waste of money for the taxpayer. It's not something that I'm talking about you or you, but it's like it's a taxpayer money. It doesn't matter if it comes out from town or state or whomever. Well, we certainly taxpayer money um, whatever we would contract for for what we need is something that we could not do if we do not have we operate on bare bones oh, and, yeah i do understand and about it, like we may if for something of this it's magnitude, totally, it's we totally may different not have it's totally people. different between you and the state i do i yeah. do but I just we do so many things in house that normally you would have hired a project manager or put other money but we do so the goal is to get all our money back from the state to be able to do it Make right. Sure it's and that's done appropriately. But we'll look at that as we move forward. At this point, <clears throat> yeah. uh, can I ask something from Lisa, if, if you don't mind, if I, if you allow me? Yeah, so this is yeah, this is still communications. Sure. Uh, just just for a minute, uh, Lisa, I just want to have one thing. Since I'm. Uh, New to all this, all this chaos. No, it's organized chaos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want. I would like one thing that I did clarify uh, to better better understand the budget for myself. I don't know the books you give it to me about four five hundred dollars. You're coming up another books like four hundred pages. <laughs> Oh, well, I will look at it, but I don't think so. I'm going to go with the 400 pages. That's one. Number two is for better understanding. Is there the department? How the department gives you the budget? Is like, do they give you line by line, or they do they give you just here's what it is, and then you combine? No, you combine, that I you get combine line by all, line. Huh? I go line by line with each one of them. You combine all three with the, let's say, communication or building, whatever, you just combine them and just put it there. How does it work? And is there, is there, possibly, is well, there a possibility I can see those line by line? You'll get line you'll by get line it in the budget. The That's why it's 400 pages. <laughs> you will get it in the book. And not only that, um, with the implementation of our new software online, you'll see it. So you could see what all professional services are for all departments, and you'll be able to, to look at you know trend information and things like that if you want. It's it's all you can go online and see our current one, but you'll have the next one. With the budget process, which will be starting March 16th for our first meeting, um, I'll be going through you know an overview of where you know what I'm presenting to you, where we're at. We'll be um, going through the various departments on the next few nights, and we'll probably start some departments that evening as well. And we will go through the the highlights of those departments where you know if, if there were major major increases or major wants, we'll probably discuss. Not probably. We oh, will probably. discuss. We'll definitely discuss yes. it. <laughs> and I shouldn't say probably. So you should know better, Lisa. But no, no, no. 
fun. No, we will discuss, you know, the major items. I mean, we're not going to talk about, you know, a ten dollar increase in office supplies, something like that. But if there's, you know, a new staff person being added or um, a significant increase because of prices going up on something, um, we'll we'll probably, you know, focus on those things. The department heads will be here to answer questions. I'll present it, and then if there's questions, they'll be in the audience to respond. If you certainly have any questions afterwards that you didn't get answered, I'm always here. I can always connect you with whoever the concerns are with for the questions. We can, we can get back to you as well. All right, thank you. Are there any other communications or petitions from council members? All right. Seeing none, we'll move to item 15. Any subject within the jurisdiction of the town council with a three minute limit. If you're on Zoom, which I think we're, we're pretty bare of Zoom, being bare bones for Zoom. So if anyone in the public would like to speak, you can approach the white table and state your name and address. Um, anything within the town. All right, seeing none, well, motion to adjourn at 821 p.m. So moved by Council Mnuchin, is there a second? A second. Second by Council Budicek. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Was, no. Abstentions? <laughs> Unanimous. All right, have a great night, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you.